come to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Anne Mumbi Waiguru, Kirinyaga governor, who is also the chairperson of Council of Governors, is wailing. And she is wailing about the countess in a clear indication that devolution is under attack. This is very sad. But what worries me is the fact that the Council of Governors settled on Anwe Guru as the chairperson, knowing very well that she was on the side of, the, of President William Ruto and that it will be a phone call away to seek audience with the national executive. But that seems not to be it. And I can tell you in this video, I will explain for you why President William Ruto is not pro-devolution. Before you look at that, kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and like our video. Are you a service provider that is looking for a solution for clients? Then this involves, this includes the people in the tra tours and travel, the medicine, cleaning, and any other service that you're doing and you're looking for clients. Don't worry. Visit zuri.ke. It is a platform, a website that will allow you to um, sell your professional services so that you can attract clientele and boost your market reach. Zuri.ke. Visit Zuri and of course take that trail which take that trail opportunity to market your professional services. And of course, people have been reaching out. You can also share that's your experience um, of using Zuri. Anwai Guru is saying that the national government, Treasury, has delayed or declined to release the counties, the cash that is supposed to be sent to the counties, according to the 2012 Public Finance Management Act to the counties. They are supposed to receive money on 15th of every month, 15th day of every month. September, days even after that inauguration, they never received. August, there was that election, they never received. And of course, they're now getting to October. And Anwe Guru is simply saying something. For her to come out in public and make a public pronouncement that guys, things are tough, we are not being given money. I am not myopic enough to uh, see this as just a mere statement. And what you can see here, since she has failed to secure audience with the executive. Suddenly enough, William Ruto's administration scrapped, or scrapped off the devolution as a cabinet, the, the Ministry of Devolution. And so the wrongs of the devolution that, that were under devolution and the departments that were under devolution were transferred to the office of Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa. In fact, if you ask me, I think indirectly Rigadi Gashagwa was given that devolution ministry. So even if Anwai Guru may not reach the president, why not get audience with Rigadi Gashagwa? Why do you think that the treasury has not released who is holding the button? Of course, there are supposed to be uh, the processes that come to that. I want to say that perception of Anwai Guru crying out that they have not received money, to me, point out to very deep issues. And let me just say, devolution in the last campaign trail was one thing that only the Raila Odinga team spoke passionately about. And I remember the proposal of one county, one product so that they will promote counties to be 
to specialize on specific products because they have different strengths or they have different potentials. But on the Kenya Kwanzaa wing, the only aspect of devolution that played out, and that was what they used to portray themselves as supporting devolution, it was coupled by women leadership saying that Kenya Kwanzaa have produced more female governors than Azimula Umoja. But in terms of what strengthening of devolution in the campaign trail, it was never there. And I think maybe as the analyst or the other policy checkers, uh, never kept keen interest on what the Kenya Kwanzaa promised for the devolution. That, that was if there is a, a department, that sector that did not, we never looked into was that devolution. Why? In 2010, and that's why I say that maybe as we made a blunder, in 2010, the promulgation of this constitution, William Ruto was against this country, that constitution. And it is that constitution that birthed, birthed devolution. Remember, this is not an idea that started now. This is an idea that was here some time back in 1960, my Jimbo system. So in 2010, Ruto was on the opposition side opposing devolution. In the 2017, 20, I think 2018, on the Building Bridges Initiative that was proposing the one man, one shilling uh, vote, uh, one shilling uh, push to make sure that counties with many people receive more funds than others, which was a plan to bolster the evolution William Ruto opposed. Challenge me. On the cabinet, he has also scrapped that devolution as a ministry and some of those roles taken to the deputy. What are we seeing? Are we seeing mutilation of devolution? And I can tell you, I don't see whether, I don't see clearly that William Ruto is pro-devolution. He has made trips. Today he was in Ethiopia. He will be in Uganda and Tanzania the next few days. He was in UN, he's in USA and he was in UK. He has not traveled with a single governor in this country, the foreign missions. Remember, when you go out, apart from those bilateral talks between counties, even governors can seal deals with different departments. Remember, my governor, James Orengo, was in Nigeria last week with the governor of Abuja. Is it governor of Abuja of some county there? With, with one of the states there. So what are we talking about? Really, there is something that is not adding up. And I want to tell you why devolution is under attack. Because of this talk of distrained finances, that our economy is doing badly, one of the uh, aspects that is going to face the heat is devolution. And as government, you know, national government have said we are going to cut that budget by 300 billion. We are moving contingency plans to cut that budget by 200 billion. I see a possibility of the Ruto government focusing more on using what they have from the national coffers to mainstream their mainstream agenda. Because they never had strength in the county. It will be more focused on what was promised. And, and, and by that, this will be a blunder. If you get to government, you have the reality, but you still stick that I promised that whether it is impossible or it is possible, you're just forcing it your way. It might not be it. And counties, you'll be shocked in the next few months if counties would be told that perhaps, even if it's by law, perhaps you have now to reduce what we're going to give you because the economy is strained. The economy is strained is a narrative that is going to hurt very many aspects. And one of them are the counties. Take that to mark. Even the people around... Uh, the economists around William Bruto seems to be not pro-devolution. Some of them have, 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 are so embracing this bottom-up. And the bottom-up is more of a national mainstreaming that they will not look at what it is. Now, one of the other things that you can see that devolution is under attack 
Ruto is against this devolution push because it revives the one man one shilling talk. Remember, if there is something, a narrative that no one, not even someone on William Ruto's wing, would want to bring now is that one man one shilling vote. Because when it was proposed in the BBI, it was opposed by them while it was actually supporting helping Mount Kenya. And they, you will see politicians from Mount Kenya even opposing it. Some of them really opposed it, while in real sense it was actually to their benefit. So by that time, there was a lot of national mainstreaming that this one cannot, we cannot. In fact, I remember, I remember William Luther's team going to Tanariva and telling people in Tanariva that that was even in Mandela. When I talk about you, say you went to a piano central. <laughs> That's how our politics was. So it brings out that, and that will politicize, that will create a very unfriendly political environment for him, especially that delicate relationship with the gamer. But people should be more worried and governors should be more worried because the Senate, which is the oversight of the county, is under his arms. Speaker is his. Majority is on Kenya Kwanza. So any other agenda that is affecting counties that is supposed to be floated and discussed by the Senate will most likely align itself with the executive agenda because they have the strength in the Senate. In fact, I propose for some reason the framers of the Constitution may, might have got something wrong. The oversighter of government is minority. And I think there should be a way minority is given their way as a priority because majority sits, goes to bed with the executive. They're not going to, they're not going to oversight the executive. This, this two, the houses needs to be looked so that that minority will play the oversight. Now, even if there is something to be done on devolution and the executive wants it to be done their way, there is nothing. It will go through the Senate smoothly because it's under their arms. That's something that you can look at it. So um, even the Council of Ghana is under, I, Anwai Guru will be called and you will keep quiet. You know, he's one of their own. Now, Ruto did not have devolution as an ideology. He's against the devolution ideology. And that's now what will worry. That's what should worry this country. That if he's going to serve for 10 or 5 years, with that, I think uh, they need to look at it. Governance need to look at it. And of course, ask the executive, the national team, what exactly is your stake or what exactly is your position on devolution? That's a dialogue that they should have. Whether it will be in some sort of a symposium or something, but they should seek audience with the executive, even with the Regatta Geisha who is in charge of devolution, so that they can mainstream, because otherwise, devolution is under attack. That's my bold.